Yo, what's going on guys? Your boy Video here back on the Mad 16 and today I got you guys the third video of today and quite possibly the last video out of the Y Trips Open. Um, I'm going to start the Carolina Panthers offensive play, but you guys could do it out of whatever you want. Well, like I said, this is my triple upload for today because I forgot to upload yesterday. Siri. So this is number three for today. Um, and of course I got to plug this, you guys already know. I have other videos on the gun wide trips open. I've also broke down the single back tight slots, the iPhone Pro, and the gun bunch week. They're all on playlists on my channel. I'll make it super easy for you guys to go check the uh, playlist section of my channel. And then uh, they're all named, like, you know, gun bunch week and single back tight slots. And they're all out of Carolina Panthers, uh, Carolina Panthers offensive playbook. I'm going to make it real easy for you guys. So today I'm going to be breaking down the running plays. And the first one I want to do, I'll start off with the inverted veer since you only want to do this if you have a mobile quarterback to begin with. Uh, disclaimer, I'm doing this with Sam Bradford. Okay. Sam Bradford. I'm going to say it again. I'm doing an inverted veer with Sam Bradford. Do not expect the most utmost success. I do this play online a lot, so I know it's going to work. But I haven't tried it out with Sam Bradford but a few times, and I've seen that there was never a time where it was absolutely ridiculous. But I know there's a couple times where you want to cut back, uh, but don't. I'll, I'll get into that in a second. Um, I'm going to leave like a link in the description if you want to skip the inverted veer because you're a pocket passer anyway, so you're going to be using like Tom Brady. Then the inverted veer is completely useless because you will you're you're going to get blocked hit and tackled by the line of scrimmage. You definitely need a quick quarterback for this. So check out the uh, the description for the time. Just skip forward to the first running play. And uh, we're going to start off with the inverted veer. And we're going to pick a random play. And we're going to be doing, once again, Sam Bradford is going who is who I'm going to be running this with. Um, so this is, this is actually, like, I ran it like two or three times before I started this video. Because I wanted to make sure that I knew everything was going to look the same. Basically, you're going to be reading either the right end or the right outside linebacker, whatever guy tells you to read, okay? You want to check this guy and see if he gets an outside release or an inside release. You're going to see this is going to be an outside release because he's going to run directly to the left to the outside. But if he just snaps and runs straight at the quarterback, that's going to be an inside release. That means you don't want to keep it. Uh, so if you want to keep the, the ball on a read option, you don't hit anything. If you want to hand it off, you hold the A button. Um, so right there, you'd want to hold the A button to hand it off. But since we didn't want to hand it off, we didn't hold A because we want to keep it for ourselves. Because we're going to see he's going to get an outside release. See, right there, we know he's got an outside release. He would have stepped to the inside if he was going after the quarterback. But since he stepped to the outside, he's going towards the running back. And the inverted veer is a little bit tricky to learn. So you definitely want to run it a few times in practice mode and get used to it. Um, even I don't run it perfectly every time. But whenever you have someone like Michael Vick, it's a lot easier to just run around him anyways. Um, so we're going to have to hold it ourselves. We're going to be able to... Uh, you're going to see we're going to be able to just easily uh, chug it right up the middle for a nice few yards. And if we had Vic, that's definitely a house call. But because we are using Sam Bradford, we're not going to be able to get it anywhere. Um, actually, I don't want to run it this way. I want to run it the other way because that's the way I'm comfortable with. Um, I know I know that sounds weird, but sometimes you're just more comfortable making reads on the right side. And I haven't made a read in practice mode to the left side, so we're going to keep it to that side. Um, boom, just like that. So you see the R is, that's the guy we want to read. So we're going to snap the ball. We're going to see if we need an outside release. So we're going to hold onto it with the quarterback. And holy crap, he is slow. So I'm going to pause it and show you guys what I mean again. Um, and what factors into this is play action. The higher the play action on the quarterback, um, then they're going to go for the running back. So if you're using someone with horrible play action, they're probably going to go after the quarterback most of the time. Um, but they can also... Like you, where you pass commit, where you hit LT or uh, L2, uh, there's also an option to play quarterback in the read option. I think it's L2 or all L2 or LT and the A button or the X button. One of the two. One of them's to go after the running back. One of them's to go after the halfback. But see right there, we're gonna see that the guy that had an R above his name is going to release to the outside. So that means he's going after the running back. So we're not gonna hold A. We're gonna keep it ourselves. I'm gonna be able to grab a few yards. If we had Vic, we might be able to house call that because this is a very high risk, but high reward play. Um, and you're gonna notice that a lot in these run plays. There are definitely some ones that you could just run no problem where there's not really much much of a risk. But this is a lot of them are a high risk, high reward, and I'll do my best to explain it to you guys. So this is gonna be goal line. I definitely wouldn't run this on the goal line, but we're gonna snap the ball outside release. We're gonna hold on to it, and you're gonna see that time it kind of got sketchy. It looked like he was going after the running back, or it was gonna look like he was going after the quarterback. But I can assure you, anytime he gets an outside release like that. He might stand there for a second, but he's always going to go up to the running back. So you're going to see he's going to release to the outside. So we're going to hold on to it with Sam Bradford. We're going to see he's going to cut back. 
but he's still going to go after the running back. Um, so anytime they get that outside release, they're not going for uh, your quarterback. Snap the ball. This time he's going to get an outside release again. So we're going to hold on to it with Bradford, and I'm going to just run right into the lineman. Bradford doesn't really have the best agility. And I feel like I'm making a lot of excuses, but I swear to God, it's so much easier the quick quarterback. Snap the ball. Going to get an outside release. We're going to hold on to it with Bradford, and there wasn't really much to run there. Uh, like I, I feel like I keep saying this, but if I had Vic, I definitely would be able to uh, definitely be able to get something going with this. I would highly suggest audibling out of the play if you ever see three people stacked up over there. Anytime you're in a read option ever, I always suggest that you that you just audible out of it if, if it's looking anything like that. Um, so we're just going to snap the ball anyways. He's going to get an outside release, so we're going to hold on to it with Bradford. And, of, of course, this is, this is why you want to audible out of it. You're going to see Bradford. There's a huge hole to run up. But Bradford ends up getting tackled behind the line of scrimmage because no one touched the guy in the far left. You're going to see that no one touched the guy on the far left, leaving him wide open to just take down Bradford. But if you would have, if you have someone fast, you might be able to just outrun them. I noticed that a lot. That's what I was talking about with Vic, where it doesn't really matter if you make a bad read if you have a fast quarterback in this play. Because if I have Vic, I'm going to be able to just run straight past this guy right up that hole with Vic. He, I'm going to be able to burn him. Um, let's run the play a few more times. Of course, goal line. Uh, he gets an outside release. We're just going to hold on to it with Bradford. And number 76 just whiffed on that block. I might have been able to house call that even with slow ass Bradford, but he whiffed on the block. Snap the ball. He's going to get an outside release again. Man, I, I wish I could show you guys what an inside release looks like. I'm going to run the play one more time. And then I'm just going to, I'm going to edit it. I'm going to edit out. And then I'm going to keep running it until I get a, uh, where he gets an inside release so that I could show you guys what it looks. Oh, oh, no, it wouldn't let me. No, that was it! God damn it! What is wrong with this game? Fuck, but that was it. You guys could clearly see here on inside release. I was holding the shit out of the A button, but Bradford just didn't want to do it. God damn it. God damn it, man. I was I was holding maybe I held it too early. I don't know. But I definitely held on to it. You're gonna see that's what the inside release looks like. He clearly is running right towards the quarterback as a point to where he just runs to the outside. You see, right to the inside instead of right to the outside. So that's how you tell whether you want to hand that off or not. We definitely want to hand that. Fucking Bradford, you definitely want to hand that off there. I swear on all things that are holy, I was holding the A button. You don't want to tap it, you want to hold it. Um, let's run it again. He's going to get an outside release, so we're going to hold on to it with Bradford. Oh, oh, he's got the moves. He's got the moves where he can tackle down at the 20-yard line. I'm going to run it one more time, and then I'm going to switch to the next play. See if we can... Oh, inside release. God fucking damn it, Bradford. What are you... Don't run this with with Sam Bradford because he won't he won't hand the ball off but there we go again man a fucking I swear on all things that are holy I'm fucking handing this ball off he just won't but you're gonna see he's got another insider release which means he's going for Bradford Bradford's gonna get tackled because he's a fucking Kobe Bryant ball hog um so we're gonna go ahead and jump into the inside zone now um so once again back to the Y trips open we're gonna be running inside zone and I wanna welcome back the and I wanna welcome the guy who skipped the are all the people that skipped the inverted beer. So let's start off with inside zone. Gonna pick a random play, and if you guys don't know about inside zone, inside zone is about that life. This is just the most overpowered running play. Last year it was the halfback counter on a shotgun, this year it's inside zone. Um, so when you snap the ball, you can take it to the outside, you can go up the middle, or you can even cut it back and go uh, to the right side. Um, this looks like we're going to have to run to the left, so we're going to snap the ball, and we are going to have to hit the edge. He's going to get a nice block shot. We're going to be able to double juke back towards the inside. Spin him out? Ah, uh, we're not going to be able to spin cycle him. Um, but I'm going to do my best to explain uh, how I read the field on inside zones. So I'm going to see that the right side is stacked, which means if I run this up the middle... Actually, I might have been able to run that out the middle, but I'm going to take it to the outside. I'm going to see he's going to block shed, so I'm not going to be able to run around anyone. Like, if I run around the edge, I'm going to be forced out of bounds, so that means I'm going to juke to the inside with a double juke. Double juking is just, you're not going to lose as much momentum, and you're not going to, you're going to be able to cut faster if you double juke to, to cut to reverse field. So, uh, what I like to, to double juke, you just want to, this time we're juke, double juking to the right, so we want to hit left. On the, on the right stick to put our left foot down and then uh, right on the right stick in rapid succession. So just left and then right on the stick really fast. The left puts your left foot down and then right makes you juke off your right foot. And then we're going to be able to turn upfield just like that. And if it were the other way around, we'd hit right on the right. If we want to juke to the left, basically, you'd hit right then left. So right to put your right foot down, left to juke off to your left foot. Um, so I'm going to run it a few times. So this time we might want to reverse the field. We're going to snap the ball and we are going to want to reverse the field. We're going to be able to pick up that lead block. And this is what I'm talking about. We're inside zone. It's a very, very low risk and almost always a high reward. Inside zone is definitely the go-to running play this year. 
Um, so what I was reading is I'm looking at this right here, and this is non-base aligned. Uh, I don't know what this is. Probably some man coverage or something it's looking like. Um, uh, but we're going to see when we snap the ball. There, Well, there's no one on the right side to begin with. You can see the left side is clearly the stack side. But we snap the ball, and everyone's pretty much anchored on the left side, but there is no one on the right. So we're just going to be able to reverse fields and run to the right. And if he holds onto that block, then you're in a one-on-one -on -one situation with that safety up there. And all you want to do is just wait, which you would actually want to cut more to the right side, and then you just double juke to the inside. It's that simple, and you're going to be able to beat that strong safety, that free safety, literally every single time. So this time looks like we're going to have to cut to the edge, and that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to snap the ball, cut to the edge, double juke to the inside, and we're going to get a nice few amount of yards. It's There's never really a risk. It's kind of hard to lose yards in inside zone this year because it's just that ridiculous. This time we're going to go right up the middle. We're going to double juke. Usually I like to spin there. That way you're just not going to take a big hit. Um, but you never want to sprint whenever you first get the ball on inside zone because as soon as you start sprinting, your guy is going to put his momentum towards whichever way you're sprinting, which means it's going to be hard to cut the other way because you're going to see his momentum whenever you hand this ball off is to go straight ahead. But we don't want to go straight ahead. You probably could, but I don't trust uh, running backs that aren't that don't have really good agility and really good ball carrier vision to be able to hit that hole without tripping over anyone. So I go towards the biggest hole almost all the time unless I'm like in mutt with my actual really good running back. So we don't want to cut up field. So we want, we want to just, uh, we would snap the ball and then we're just going to point the stick in the direction of the hole. And whenever they're running clearly in the direction of the hole, then we're going to hit the sprint button in RT or R2. And it's that simple. That's how we want to do it. We don't want to sprint right out the gate or else we're not going to be able to cut to the right side of the field. So I'm going to snap it. We're going to be able to cut to the outside, juke to the inside, and get down to the 20-yard line. Um, the inside zone is definitely the best run play this year. Definitely, definitely. This time we're going to run it right up the middle, and uh, we're going to end up chucking forward. But inside zones are definitely better off with a quicker running back. And a lot of people will use, like, trucking running backs. And that's fine if you just want to push forward. But if you want to be able to cut and reverse fields and be able to hit the hole before block shits happen and all that good stuff, you definitely want to have someone quick. And since you're in shotgun, it's a lot harder to take a big hit when you're in shotgun, I noticed, especially this year, because you're able to just get down and run around people. Because in shotgun, you have more room to work with in the backfield whenever you get the handoff. So it's a lot easier to avoid a big hit, in my personal opinion, and I, I think that that's just true altogether. So let's go ahead and jump into the next running play. Um, and this one's going to be, is it halfback off tackle? That was, yeah, halfback off tackle just right there. And this is definitely going to be an outside running play, which means you're going to want to hit the edge almost every time. There's a certain situation where you want to go to the inside, and I'll be sure to point that out when that happens. But this is a very high risk, high reward play, just like the inverted veer, if you guys watch that. Um, there's a very, very good chance that you could tackle behind the line of scrimmage. There's a very, very good chance you rip one off for uh, a, a high amount of yards. So this is definitely not one you want to run on third and two because you never know. Um, so you want to snap the ball. And this time we're going to see if you want to definitely go to the outside. Uh, our, our wide receivers aren't really blocking on this play. So you're going to see they're going to be able to push them. They're, the the, the cornerbacks are going to follow them up because they don't block till they get to uh, a few like 10 or so yards up. So just like that, they want to pull them off, and then they start blocking once they get up there. Unless your name is Riley Cooper, then you just run straight to the end zone for some fucking reason. What are you doing? Um, but they won't block anyone until they get a few yards up the field, because their job is to just pull the quarterbacks off. So we want to snap the ball, and this was an absolute bust. I would, But then again, that's goal line. I would never run this play in the goal line, unless you're just trying to get two yards. This play is actually pretty good for picking up two or three yards in the goal line. Um, to be completely honest, it actually really is pretty good at picking up a one or two yards. Um, but I just wouldn't suggest it because you're out of shotgun and people like to send edge heat out of shotgun because it's very good this year out of shotgun. So we're going to snap the ball and this time we're actually going to cut up the middle of the field, but Ryan Matthews doesn't really have the speed to do stuff like that. Uh, this one inside zone, you could really use any type of running back, but any sort of outside run, you have to have someone fast. There is Ryan Matthews is definitely too slow for this. I would suggest at least 94 speed, and I believe Ryan Matthews is at a 90, uh, at least 94 speed, at the very, very minimum 94. Um, but obviously, the quicker the better. And I knew that that new campus hero, uh, what's his name, just came out. Uh, was his name? Dre Archer. He's got 99 speed. But if you don't, if you're looking for a budget running back, man, just pick up David Johnson. Any of them. You can. If you can't pick up the all rookie, just pick up the 91 overall. But all the 87, the 91, and the all rookie, the 95 overall, David Johnson are definitely probably the best every down running back. They got good, solid catching stats, good trucking, good speed, and they work perfectly for inside zones because even if they take a big hit, you know, 
uh, they definitely have the carrying to be able to make up for it. So I would definitely suggest them. And you know, you got options because the 87 and the 91 definitely aren't that expensive, but you but they are fast, which is what you need to be able to hit the edge on this. God, I tried to juke to the inside. I guess I hit the stick wrong, but if you double juke to the inside right there, you're probably going to get a few more yards. I'm trying to get to the scenario where you take it up. See, right there, uh, that guy was definitely going to shoot the gap, so we have to take it to the outside instead of going up the gap. But there are definitely situations where they're blitzing up the edge, and you have to go up that gap. Um, so this, also, we're going to see, man, Ryan Matthews is just way too slow. And, and I feel like I complain about the team a lot in this, but you... The, the plays you run are definitely very selective. That time we're barely able to hit the edge with Ryan Matthews and we're going to be able to get to the 20 yard line. Um, I want to get to that that situation where you run up to the middle. And this one might be right here where you hit the gap. No, it's definitely not. Uh, but the double A gap is definitely very easy to run against this year unless they come out specific run defense, especially outside runs, which is what that was right there. So we're going to run it and this time we're going to instantly get block shed and tackled. We picked up about one, but then Ryan Matthews... Uh, broke off a tackle and went backwards for a few yards so this is oh here's a good example right there we're gonna be able to hit the gap that was what we're gonna to do to maximize our yards because if we go to the outside we're gonna get tackled pretty much as soon as we hit the edge um so i'm gonna run the ball juke to the inside and oh we almost house called it uh once again ryan matthews just a little slow and couldn't outspeed jonathan hankins jesus christ um so this is goal line and in goal line like i said man it's really good for picking up two or three yards um and a lot of times if if people are in quarters defense I might actually, I'm actually, oh yeah, I'm actually going to show you guys what I mean. God, Ryan Matthews, go the fuck, you idiot, just go down, for the love of God. Um, and I'm going to show you guys what this looks like, because this does actually work pretty well in quarters. And I'm going to show you guys what I mean, where you definitely don't want to run, run it to the outside against quarters. You, there's definitely an opportunity to juke to the middle. Um, so let's just come out in quarters, uh, cover three, drop, why not? So we're going to run the ball, and this time we're going to cut up the middle of the field. And God, Ryan Matthews has absolutely no ball carrier vision, so he's just going to run into everyone. He's not going to actually, like, find a hole. Um, so this is the only time, like, really in quarters is where you want to cut this up the middle of the field because everyone stays home, so cutting up the middle of the field is never a really, like, a good idea on plays like this. But when they come out in quarters, this is a very, very good run against quarters because, like I said, everyone stays home. Which means you're going to be able, to, like, the left guard and the right guard are going to be able to run up. Like, you see, he's going to be able to run up and pick up that middle linebacker, number 76. But Ryan Matthews just isn't quick enough to be able to hit the hole before he's able to block shit. So just like that. Um, and whenever they're coming out in quarters like this, just like inside zone, you don't want to hold RT when you snap the ball. Snap the ball, find the hole, and then hold down RT. And then you're not going to get, you're not going to, like, lose your momentum as much whenever you uh, cut up field. So that's what I'm talking about there. And then for the final run play, oh, we got the halfback draw. Halfback draw is, I don't really like them. I never really have. Uh, yeah, that is, that actually is all the run plays in the formation. So the halfback draw, it's very, very selective, uh, very high risk, very low reward in my opinion. It, shoot, I mean, even whenever I have the hole, it's almost impossible to hit the hole because your center gets bullied a lot. Never run this in quarters, for the love of God. There's a horrible play to run in quarters. Um... Because it's just so easy to get tackled before they even hand the ball off. But I'm not really a big fan of the draws. This year, out of shotgun, some of them are pretty good out of under center. But out of shotgun, they're really, really not that good. I don't know why. But you're going to see, we're, we're not really going to be able to get anything. Uh, this is It's kind of good against quarters or whenever they drop back. Because you're going to get that sort of thing. We're going to have, like, if they drop back a lot of people into coverage, then this is sometimes going to be a good play to run. But even then, I would still just rather run inside zone. It's right there. See, in goal line, like, whenever they blitz so many people, there's absolutely nothing you could do. You're basically getting tackled in the backfield before you even get the ball. So I really, really don't like draws. See, actually right there, that would have been pretty perfect how we cut and found that hole. But because Ryan Matthews is just a little bit too slow, we weren't able to hit the hedge edge. He made it look really good by breaking off that tackle. But really, we were down after about a gain of two. Um, so this also looks like it's goal line, or actually, I think that was 5-2. So we're going to double juke to the inside, but we're not going to be able to actually juke, and we're just going to go down. So I definitely would just stay away from this. I think the best two runs are probably the inverted veer and inside zone. Actually, right there is, is a really good example. God, why won't he double juke? Um, but that was a pretty, that was a pretty good run out of the halfback draw, because everyone, like I said, like, they're only blitzing three people, which means you're going to have three lead blockers. Um... So just as simple as breaking off seven tackles and you're down to the 10-yard line. I'm actually going to pause it and show you guys. They dropped so many. Ooh, we're in quarters, too. Um, 
But you're going to see they're dropping so many people into coverage that we have three lead blockers from our linemen. And I'm doing my best to follow the lead blockers, but they didn't really separate too well, which is why I actually got hit right away. But this is quarters. So uh, this is a good example. See, we got three lead blockers. What I like to do in that situation is just to let go of the, of the sprint button. That way it gives time for all of your blockers to develop blocks in front of you. So, uh, right, I'm like, I find my hole, I'm sprinting, and then I'm letting go of the sprint button right there. That way I'm not going to trip too much on everyone, and I'm going to be able to just hit the holes correctly and be able to let my blocks develop in front of me, which is why, like, Le uh, Le'Veon Bell is very, very good at finding holes and everything because he's not the fastest guy in the world, but he uses that to his, to his advantage, and he's able to let blocks develop in front of him. So this time, they're blitzing a lot of people, and the the draw, its demise is really a lot of people blitzing. Um, anytime people blitz a lot and you're running a draw, you're pretty much fucked, especially whenever you have Ryan Matthews spinning the wrong way off of uh, off of uh, his blockers. Um, but whenever they're only rushing like two or three people, that makes this play really good. It's the same thing in the NFL. That's why when you see like on third and 17, they'll run a draw and they make up like 15 of the yards because there's just no people rushing, which means no one has a chance at tackling him until he's about 15 yards down the field, which makes the draw really, really effective. But only, see like right here, then only in quarter situations is this really effective. And even then, we got tackled right away because our lead blocker didn't even pick up the block. So that's actually going to be it for the video, guys. If you like it, give it a like, comment, and subscribe. I know this is a long one, I'm sorry, but run. I just want to get all the running plays out in one, and this was like four plays, so I know that this video is long, but I never want to just break up the run plays into multiple videos. That doesn't make any goddamn sense to me. But um, like, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Twitter. It's going to be down in the description below. And as always, guys, yeah.